Yeah, that, that music always gets me just so pumped up. So, hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of Facebook Friday Live. I have John Fitzgerald and Amy Mackey as my guests today. They are part of the Plan Strong team. They are coaches with uh, the Plan Strong coaching program. John runs supply chain. Amy works with social media, creative, you name it. You guys are the bomb. But Amy, well, before we jump into why we're here today and, and why I invited you guys on, I first have to say, and I'm feeling feisty today, right? I'm feeling really feisty. And, and that's why I wore this shirt right here. This is my St. Louis, Missouri, all city boxing club that Amy gave me because Amy, will you tell us just a little bit about this club that you guys started? Absolutely. In 2014, we started a youth nonprofit boxing program in the city of St. Louis that was completely free for anybody who wanted to join. We provided healthy snacks on a daily basis, help with homework, and we gave the kids something to do uh, after school on the weekends by training, keeping their mind right, physical fitness, all of those things, good sportsmanship. And we ran our program for three years in the city of St. Louis. It was a wonderful experience that we um, are still in touch with many of the kids that were in our program who are now young adults and, and, and full on adults. We started <laughs> this program with kids from ages eight to 21. And our kids now are, gosh, doing well and thriving. And uh, it's always something joyful to my heart to see that logo. Well, what a um, what a gift that you and Bill gave all of those kids. And I'm sure in return, it boomeranged around and ended up being a great gift for you guys. So thank, thank you for doing that. And, you know, before we, we went live, you just mentioned uh, one of your kids, Randy, um, Canada, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, tell us a little bit about him. Randy Canada is a professional boxer and he is in the city of Dallas. He's from St. Louis. He's part of the Total Combat League team boxing program. This is their second season. He was in the All-Stars last year at the end of the season doing really well. He's vegan and he's just, uh, he's a fine citizen of the city of Dallas and we're super proud of him. Awesome. And John, why did you decide on that shirt today? <laughs> Rip, I just love blue. And I just figured you guys are having a pizza party. And that's all I needed to hear was you were having a pizza party and I'm there. But now, I thought I would dress up for the day. Now, John, since this is, a, everybody has to know that I love giving John a hard time. But John, <laughs> John, since this is a pizza party, Right. We're going to kind of let our hair down a little bit. It also means I think you need to unbutton one more button there. One more. My, yeah. you know Come what? on. I'm just glad I wore a shirt that only has four buttons on it. <laughs> I'm not afraid where you might take this. How's that? Uh, there's, I, 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 easy. Easy, man. We're going we're gonna to break the internet if you do that again. <laughs> <laughs> or, or get X'd off the internet. What are the other? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I just have to say, if anybody – wants to see more of this show, you have to come to one of our retreats because when these two get together, it is gangbuster crazy fun. I swear, Elton John could make an appearance. There could be, there could be other characters that make an appearance during our talent shows. These guys go all out. All out, we, we really do. But a Amy and John, so, you know, what was the impetus for today's um, Facebook Friday Live was something that you guys just did Wednesday. So could you tell us briefly, what are you guys doing every Wednesday morning? Uh, you're doing the Wednesday, what is it? The Wednesday warm up? The Wednesday warm up. Yep. It's basically, and think, think uh, Regis and Kathy Lee, only more fun. <laughs> <laughs> and better looking. <laughs> well, and all plant based, right? So we bring we bring news you can use and tips and ideas to the Plant Strong Community Facebook group. Some of it is part of what we teach during coaching. Some of it is news articles of the week. Um, a little bit of information about what we do at Plant Strong, and and you know whatever happens to come up that day. Great. So, so let's carry over what you did on Wednesday to today, and that was what exactly. Well, we, we talked about pizza parties in a house divided. As John can tell you, 
one of the things that are um, that plant strong people at large have a tendency to struggle with is a house divided. If you are the only person in your household who is eating this way, it can sometimes be a struggle. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And, and not only just a house divided, right, where you might be the only person in your house, but you might be the only person you know that eats this way. And so you can, you know, you can have a pizza party, invite friends over and still not feel awkward or weird, like, oh, look what they're eating, look what they're not eating. It's just a great way to kind of get over one of the biggest hurdles we really do see in the coaching. Yeah. And so we're going to jump into that. And Amy has taken some amazing photos and has all kinds of examples. So you can visual visualize it. I'm a visual learner, Amy. And so what you've done and what you've compiled is really fantastic. Before we jump into that, I just want to say, so Amy and John, you both have made an effort to do something that you you're not used to doing amy for you it's stretching yes oh yes absolutely so i'm on day i finished day 13 yesterday i have a new app on my phone i've started stretching during the month of october i hiked 156 miles now i'll tell you this 156 wow. miles is great but you know what's even better than that stretching your muscles <laughs> so you're warming up or you're cooling down or stretching in between it's really important to really get a good stretch on and i'm horrible at that um not horrible at stretching itself but remembering to do it and so i have an app on my phone that reminds me daily to do a stretch there are different stretching workouts that you can do and i'm working on building my habit of doing it every day no matter what which is one of the things that we teach during the coaching program and i'll tell you what i'm really enjoying it I'm 13 days in and I've got all kinds of workouts, all kinds of different stretches. It's phenomenal. Oh, so, so give me an example. Like when you stretch, is it for 10 minutes, 15, 30 minutes? What is it? So the end, the app I'm using is called bend, uh, obviously. And so you can do a workout anywhere from four minutes to 15 minutes. So there's like, um, specific ones like for your neck, your shoulders, your hips, etc. And they, they range and you can pick four minutes, 10 minutes, or like a full body stretch is 15 minutes, which isn't really a lot of time at all. All right. My, I cannot believe how tight I've been in my neck and shoulders as of late. I don't know why I don't, maybe it's the stress, but, but Amy, give me and everybody at home a stretch that we can do right now for 20 seconds for our neck. What can we do? Oh, absolutely. So especially here's one of the reasons why you might be stressed in your neck. If you're looking at your phone, oh. Even just this little mm. bit of like just having your head tilted down, looking at your phone like this, put so much stress on your neck and pulls on your shoulders as well. Yeah. One of the stretches on my stretch for your neck is actually sort of a neck shoulder because it's going to pull all of this right here. And it is this. You're going to pull oh. across, right? You're going to pull across here and you're going to pull across here. And what that does. John, John, you're not pulling with your other arm. It's, it's <laughs> come on. What it, what it does is it's going to pull this muscle that goes from your, your shoulder all the way or your neck all the way down your shoulder. It's going to loosen that up. So it's not so tight on this, right? So that was one of the ones that I was actually doing oh. this last night. And it, and the more, the more you sort of get your stretch on and the more you just, loosen those muscles up and just kind of be aware when you're holding your phone if you're doing this you're going to be in that mode where you're pulling your neck down try holding your phone more closer um in parallel with your face than to be looking down like this it'll save some of that stress right here on your muscles i love it and john you're you're trying to like meditate more talk to me about that <laughs> Well, I can't tell you how many times I've tried to start a meditation habit. I'm saying probably a dozen times. And I do it for a couple of days and then I stop. The problem is, I figured out, was that, you know, these people tell you meditate for 20 minutes, meditate for 10 minutes. Well, my mind goes everywhere in, in two minutes, so let alone 10 or 20 minutes. So I just got really frustrated with it. So I'm trying this, what's called Ziva Meditations by Emily Fletcher. Um, Amy knows the title of the book. I always forget it. Stress less, accomplish more. Yes, yeah, stress less, accomplish more. And so you it's 15 minutes twice a day. So right now I'm in the period, they say for a week, for the first week. So I started on Monday. For the first week, you just do one minute and you just close your eyes. You take a couple deep breaths and then you focus on all using all your senses and sensing what's around you, right? That's all you're doing. What you hear, what you see, even with your eyes closed, right? What you see, 
what you hear, what you touch, what you smell. And then you do that for like 10 or 15 seconds. And then you focus on just one scent, one sense. You just focus on, okay, what am I only focus on what I'm smelling or only focus on what I'm hearing. And it is fascinating just in doing it two, two times a day for the last now four and a half days, how much when you really focus on just one sense, whether it's hearing or smell or it, it's really amazing how you can really kind of block out everything else that, that's going on. Oh, you know, I'm really, I'm glad to hear that because I, I really want to become a meditator and I haven't, I've neglected to start. And this sounds like a great way to start. Well, it's a great way to start with because, you know, we talk about in the coaching program, we talk about tiny habits, right? The book by BJ Fogg and how he mentions doing a habit in a small, like a small portion of a habit. Same thing. I'm doing meditation, but I only have to do it for a minute. If I go a little longer, no big deal. But all I have to do, and it's much, much less overwhelming than saying, okay, I'm going to meditate for 30 minutes, right? Yeah. It's just hard to create that habit. All right. I think, thank you guys for getting us up to speed with uh, your, your new goings ons. <laughs> um, so Amy or John, talk to me about the, the, the pizza party. Where do we start? With the eating. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that the thing to recognize is that uh, almost universally everybody loves pizza, right? So if you're having company, if you if you're having a big group over, if it's a holiday, if you've got a book club, if you've got kids in the house, if you, they have friends over, having a pizza party is a really great way to bring everybody to the table, even if your toppings are different. And so we wanted to tackle this topic today um, to explain how many different kinds of toppings that you can put out on a pizza bar for a build your own pizza party. That, I love it. So uh, that looks like uh, arugula on top of a pizza right there. <laughs> that is. So we all know the standard pizza toppings, you know, the, the standard American diet pizza toppings. Everybody knows what those are. My intention for these first few pizzas that I want to share with you is to give you some different examples of things you can top a pizza with that you may not have thought of before. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorites is fresh arugula. Now, you're not going to bake the arugula on the pie. You're going to put it on top after your pizza is baked. This was just a loaded veggie pizza that was just topped with broccoli and peppers and onions and marinara sauce that comes in the little packets inside our Plant Strong pizza crust kit. And then after it was done baking, I put the arugula on the top and you drizzle this with a little bit of lemon balsamic vinegar. Mm. I had this pizza when we had dined out once that had the arugula on top. This wasn't my idea. I stole it. Uh, but I will tell you this. It adds a good peppery crunch to the top of your pizza, especially, you know, the arugula has that peppery bite to it. With the lemon drizzle, it's just absolutely amazing. It makes a really fresh topping. You just might need to bring a fork. Yeah, I, I find arugula. I the, It's funny, the, the longer that I've been doing this lifestyle, the more I appreciate the greens that really have a bite to them. Uh, you know, Swiss chard, um, like collards, different ones. But arugula is so unique. And I'm finding that's what I'm turning to now as my base for, I'd say, 50% of all my, my bowls and salads and stuff like that. Love it. So I can't wait to try it like you've done here on top of a pizza. You know what's interesting, Rip? The first time that that I saw Engine 2 back and they show this example, I yeah. was like, I don't know if I like greens on a pizza, maybe on the side. But you know how old people are always like, oh, you eat plant strong, all you or you eat plant-based, all you eat is twigs and leaves and greens, right? I'm like, this is like a salad pizza to me. And so it's it's much more than just a salad because you've got all those toppings, you've got that delicious crust in the sauce. It's it's really amazing. And the, and the balsamic, I've done some mango on top. It's so good. Mm, mm. Mango? <laughs> <laughs> well, mango balsamic vinegar. Let me rephrase. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So on to our next pizza. Oh, I love this one, you guys. Okay. So I made this pizza on our grill outside. I, I put all of the toppings wow. on and I grilled it on, on the grill. This is another example of how you can make pizza really, really fun and interesting. This is basically a barbecue sauce on top of our Plant Strong pizza kit crust. And we have our slabs of corn. So sweet corn in the summertime, I sliced 
the slabs off of the, the corn and put these on the pizza with red peppers, red onions, pinto beans, some cilantro. Um, this pizza has a good, hefty, smoky flavor to it, especially if you do it on your grill. I did it with some mesquite chips. This was absolutely incredible. After it was done baking, I put this fresh cilantro on top and this pizza was just an absolute hit with everybody that we dined with that night. Mm, John, obviously you love cilantro, Amy. Would you, John, do you like cilantro? <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, here in Atlanta, there's a, a place called Sweet Greens and uh, it's just like a build your own salad type thing. I get cilantro on it every single time. It just adds, I just love the kick it gives to a, a salad or a pizza like this. I, yeah, no, I'm a big fan of cilantro. Wow. So in the comments section, let us know if you're one of the 10% of the population that think that cilantro tastes like soap. <laughs> and, and also indicate if you pronounce it cilantro. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Cilantro. <laughs> well, and I just want to remind everybody that you can have baked toppings and fresh toppings on the same pizza. Don't feel like it has to be all or nothing. You can mix those up. So have fun playing with that. Um, it adds a little bit of a different texture to have that fresh crisp on the top as well. And uh, you really can't go wrong with just about anything like that that you're going to pop on top of a pizza fresh after it's baked. So before we go on to the next pizza, I'd love it if everybody all... However, 100 of us that are that are live right now, if we could all together say cilantro on three. One, two, three. Cilantro. cilantro. Good. Oh, I didn't hold it as long. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's go on to our next pizza. And look at that. Rhonda, a local restaurant has a collard and black eyed pea pizza. Wow. It's a good idea. No, Rhonda, I was actually thinking about that because I made black eyed peas yesterday. And I was thinking, you know what? That would be a really good pizza. I was actually thinking about that this morning. So thank you for bringing that up. This the next slide, Amy, the next pizza guide. I know, right? <laughs> this particular pizza has some barbecue sauce mixed in with our marinara that comes in the pouch inside the pizza crust kit. And this has some roasted Brussels sprouts on it that I have dusted with smoked, pe uh, smoked paprika. And this has tempeh bacon on it. So tempeh bacon is, tempeh is a fermented soybean cake I slice it into strips that are the size of a, like a stick of gum. And then I marinate those in a combination of Bragg's liquid aminos, a little drizzle of um, maple syrup, some water and some liquid smoke. And I let that sit as long as possible, you know, up, at least an hour, I would say overnight if you can do it. And then you're gonna bake those at 400 degrees in the oven until they get crispy. Depending upon how thick you slice your slabs, it could be about 30 to 45 minutes. And then those topped on top of this pizza with some um, pickled cherry peppers, hot cherry peppers, really made a great uh, smoky pizza. Mm. I am a, I have become such a fan of roasted uh, Brussels sprouts, especially when you do what you've done there, Amy, which is when you kind of cut them in half or thirds. Yep. Uh, I find them just to be, again, it is my, it's my palate that has become so much more mature as I age and appreciates the nuanced uh, bitterness of these green leafies and Brussels sprout. You know, wow. I'm, John. Yeah, I boy, it's music to my ears to hear you say that, Rip. Just the way you laid it all out there. <laughs> exactly, John. Exactly. Well, and I'll tell you, I if you would have told me 15 years ago I'd be putting Brussels sprouts on a pizza, I would have told you you were crazy. But <laughs> This is absolutely, it's its just a great combination of flavors and textures that really make this pizza stand apart. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting too, you mentioned that you take the, the sauce pack that it's included and you add a little barbecue sauce to it. And my son Cole is has turned our whole family into making these barbecue pizzas where it's the sauce pack, barbecue sauce, it's it's tofu, it's broccoli, it's um, spinach, and that's it. Just those three ingredients. And and the thing that he does that I'm really not good at, and Amy and John, you tell me if you are. He doesn't go crazy with the toppings. Mm -hmm. I like to go crazy because I want my pizza to look like this. There's an absolute huge party on top, and it and it weighs five pounds when I put it in that oven. But he's very discerning. And it has always comes out and we're always like, ooh, can I have a bite of yours? 
<laughs> I love that. I love that, that that's, I think, the fun part of having a plant strong pizza party in that way. Everybody really has a fun time making their own. You know, it's not just a pizza. It can also be a statement, whether you are piling it high and you need a shovel or you're having it so delicately decorated that it is just the perfect combination of toppings. Yeah. You never know what you're going to get with a pizza party. Yeah. Usually when I, well, go ahead, Rip. No, no, no. You, you go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to say, usually when I'm making a pizza, there's no planning involved. I'm just piling stuff on there. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, wow, I have a lot of toppings on this pizza. Or it's like, oh, wait, I need to add something. So, yeah, yeah. So before we go too, too much farther, I just want to stop for a second, let people know. And this is an absolute, this is a plug for the Plant Strong Pizzas. They come like this. You get five pizza crusts along with five sauce packs, as Amy has said. And I want you to know that these truly have been a game changer in our, our household because you just take it out of the freezer and then you load it up, you put it in the oven after you put the sauce pack on and you customize your ingredients as Amy is, is showing us here. But I want you to know how clean this is. So I'm going to read the ingredients for you. So the crust is just organic whole wheat flour, water, organic sourdough, organic vinegar, yeast, a, just a little smidgen kiss of maple syrup, a little kiss, John, a little kiss, and then, and, then a, and then a little bit of salt. And then the sauce packs that come with it are just organic tomatoes, organic vinegar, maple syrup again, organic garlic, organic basil, and organic oregano. So, and it's one truly one of our hero ingredients uh, at plantstrongfoods.com. So, Thank you for indulging me with the ingredients that are in these, uh, that it's in the pizza kit. You know, Rip, we talk a lot in, at Plant Strong about bowl building, right? And to me, making yeah. a pizza is nothing more than building a bowl on a pizza crust. So, you know, when you look at all this stuff and, and the beautiful pictures and the ones that Amy's created, don't lock yourself in. Figure out what you love, mm -hmm. add stuff, subtract stuff, you know, whatever makes you happy for that day. Right on, John. I like it. <laughs> Uh, so Nancy wants to know, should I freeze the pizzas as soon as they arrive? I would say absolutely. Yeah. They, they come in this, what's called a modified atmosphere, spheric packaging. And it's typically, typically good for several months, but I would just take a knife, open it up, put it in the freezer bag that's included inside the, uh, the pack and then make whatever you're going to make. And then put two or three or four in the freezer bag for a later date and then throw the five sauce packs in the pantry. Those can be ambient uh, all day long. Well, and that's what I love about our pizza crust kits is because it really is a pizza party in a pack. It's coming to you. You've got five of them, have some company over, build your pizza bar, load that up with toppings and let everybody have their fun. Or if you're having them individually, you can even, if you're the only person in your household and you don't want leftovers, you can even slice these in half. Mm. Decorate your pizza put it in the oven. I do have a tip for you. If you're going to do that, use a cookie sheet. And when you are putting your half a pizza on the cookie sheet, put the cut side up on the edge of the lip. So that way your sauce doesn't run off. Ah, uh, <laughs> little secrets, little secrets. I, I do that sometimes if I'm home by myself, I'll just make half a crust. Mm -hmm. And so in order to keep the sauce from running off the cut side, because there is a little bit of a rim around the edge of our pizza crust that holds everything in there. That's a great way to do it. If you are home by yourself and just want to have a little bit of pizza. Excellent, Amy. All right, let's move on to the next pizza. Oh, this one. Yes. <laughs> okay. So you've heard yeah. us raving about. That looks like a chocolate pudding on top of, uh, <laughs> of the pizza. What is it? Is it, it is a hot chocolate pizza? It is our secret sauce peanut oh. curry. Oh my. I, I love fresh spring rolls dipped in peanut sauce. It is one mm. of my favorite things to have. Um, it's light and refreshing. This is a pizza inspired by that. I baked this crust with our secret sauce peanut curry sauce on top of the pizza that I had already marinated some tofu and baked the tofu. So you see there's some little baked tofu bricks on there, um, carrots and red peppers. I baked it in the oven. And then once I took it out, I added the green onions, the spinach and the fresh mango on top with a mm -hmm. little squeeze of lime and some crushed red pepper. This is one of my favorite go-to pizzas now that I've made this. I absolutely love this flavor combination. Oh, I never would have thought to try that. Have you tried this yet, John? 
No, I haven't. I have not. But as soon as Amy said that was the Thai pe the, the peanut sauce, I was like, I got to try that. Uh -huh. But you know what, Rip? I will tell you this. You know I love me some OMG walnut sauce. And I have made a pizza with OMG walnut sauce as the base. So it can wow. be done. Wow. So for those that don't know what John's talking about exactly, and I think it's in every one of the Esselstyn cookbooks, whether it's the engine two, whether it's prevent and reverse, whether it is Jane and Anne's, uh, how to be a plant-based woman warrior, the OMG, which is, you know, oh my gosh, uh, <laughs> walnut sauce appears. And it's basically just, it's walnuts. It is a little bit of soy sauce, uh, garlic and water. I think it's just those four ingredients that yeah. you throw into a blender or a, uh, uh what's the word i'm looking for <laughs> food processor food processor exactly um and it is it is it's it's sinful <laughs> it's a little bit of heaven it's when, a little bit of heaven when you use that as your sauce what toppings are you using so uh i've used the tempeh i you know what you know in your in the cookbooks you guys had the stack polenta you know the dr seuss stack polenta i actually made a dr seuss stack polenta pizza mm, mm. it was amazing wow. Wow. So that, sounds Rip, that is what that's. The, yeah. So it's the walnut sauce, sweet potatoes. I didn't, I did not use the, uh, the polenta. I left that off. So it's just the sweet potatoes, the walnut sauce, a little bit of basil, uh, pesto, and then topped it off with uh, balsamic vinegar. Oh, mm. so good. That sounds amazing. Well, I love bringing these different kinds of ideas to you. I think we have another pizza coming up. Ah, this one. All right, so if you take a plant strong pizza crust and you top it with plant strong chili, we have so many different flavors to choose from now. Pick your favorite plant strong chili, use that as the sauce. And then I took baked potatoes, I sliced them thin, I added some baked potatoes, red peppers, some jalapenos, and I baked this up. Once it was done baking, I added the fresh cilantro and the green onions, dusted it with a little bit of black pepper and some smoked paprika. This is a hearty rib sticking pizza. I can tell. I can tell by looking. And something about potatoes, you know, um, they just, they do, they stick to your ribs. Um, and is that, do you have any jalapenos on there too? Yep. Fresh jalapenos. Oh. Oh, I yeah. like things hot. If you don't like jalapenos, you can use um, any kind of mild pepper or just a bell pepper. Um, but I, I thought that this one definitely warranted that little bit of kick. So do you, when, when you, have you used, I don't know, all of our chilies? But the reason I ask is I'm wondering if you have to put them, if you have to take off any of the liquid before you put it on the pizza crust. So what I usually do is I will take the box, open the box, and then I'll use a spoon to uh, sort of pull out the, the ingredients to put on top of the pizza crust. I don't want it to be too soggy. Yeah. Um, I, I like I like the thought sauce to be a little bit thicker. So if you're if you're pulling the chili out of the box instead of just dumping the whole box on, use a spoon and then you can choose how much liquid you include. Right on. You know, Rip, it just might be for me the angle of that picture, but that looks like one of your piled high pizzas. I mean, that thing look that those toppings look thick on there. This is yeah. heavy. Guaranteed, yeah. this is a heavy yeah. pizza loaded up with all that goodness. Yeah, that, that's one that Ann Kryle Esselstyn would approve. For <laughs> sure. Yeah, and Ann, Ann, Ann doesn't like she doesn't call it a pizza unless it's like pile, <laughs> piled literally like five inches high. I love that. All right, so this is this is at the end of my pizza examples for you that are just uh, interesting toppings that you might want to try. Let's get into what happens when you are in a house divided and people in your house maybe want pepperoni or maybe want chicken on their pizza, whatever it may be that they want on their on top of their pizza. We have some great ideas for how to build a better. Oh, I forgot about this one. Thank you, Carrie. <laughs> Not all pizzas have to be for dinner. This one can actually be for dessert. This is an apple pizza that I absolutely love. It is applesauce with apple slices with some walnuts and some cinnamon baked in the oven. It's like an apple tart. It is absolutely incredible. You can really have fun with the toppings on this one. You could do pear slices. You could add some cranberries. Anything that you want to do to really dress this up, it makes a great dessert. And so it's just a little something extra to do with your pizza crust. Well, and I love the... Um 
I love the versatility of these pizza crusts and I, I love what you've done here. You know, one of the things that I do for my kids, because I've got three kids that are you know, nine, 14 and 16 is we'll do, I'll do the same thing. I actually will put just the pizza crust in the oven for five minutes just to warm it up. And then we do hot peanut butter, banana, and jelly. Ooh. And we cut it up just like that. And so everybody gets their open-faced peanut butter, banana, and jelly. We call it the Elvis. And it is so good. That sounds amazing. <laughs> I've never tried that. And that's a great way to bring kids to the table as well. That's definitely something that the kids would enjoy. And so, I mean, and if you ask your kids, if you could put anything on top of a pizza, what would it be? You might yeah. be surprised at some of their answers and they might have some really good ideas for you. And mm -hmm. I also think that that's one of the great ways to get kids involved is really to involve them in the process. Yeah. yeah you might be surprised at the combinations they come up with, though. So just tell them if they make it, they have to eat it. Now, I need Thomas to know that he says it looks like you would have to eat these pizzas with forks. He's talking about the prior ones. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like you could pick these up and eat by the slice. I want Thomas to know personally I eat pizza with a hand. I don't eat it with a fork or a knife. And sometimes it can get a little unruly, but that's part of the fun. These also, the crusts crisp up really nicely on the yeah. bottom. They actually will hold more weight than you think that they would. Unless you get too much liquid on them, that can that can make them, if, you, if you're really sloppy with a whole bunch of sauce, that can make it a little bit soggier. But ultimately, I think these crisp up really nice. You can pick these up and eat them. If any toppings fall off the sides, you might want to have a fork for those because you're not going to want to leave those behind on your plate. But I also did want to say, um, Nancy had asked about the, the chestnuts. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Actually, chestnuts are um, a low fat item. They're not as fatty as regular uh, tree nuts. They're a little bit different in composition. So that's a great, great idea. Chestnuts actually are 5% fat. I think they're the lowest nut that I know of. I mean, John, do you know a lower fat nut? <laughs> hmm. I have lost some weight, but other than that, no. <laughs> yeah, I think it is the the chestnut. But hey, it's that time of the year. It Not is. They're, they're roasting on an open fire. Now's the I, time to get them. Let's do they're, it. They're smushed on the sidewalks here in Portland because we have a lot of chestnut trees here. So it's wow. it's always fun to see the squirrels um, that are, uh, or, or the crows who are mm. actually surrounding the chestnut trees here in, in Portland. Well, this was the last pizza example. Thank you, Carrie, for helping me out with that. Now we're going to move on to how to build a better pizza when you have a pizza bar. So like I said before, everyone knows how to put pepperoni on a pizza or sausage on a pizza. Those are the pizzas that we grew up with. But these are some examples for how you can have a better than standard American diet pizza and a plant strong pizza all on one pie. So mm. this is going to give you a breakdown of how to do sort of good and better. And so this is a Fiesta pizza. It's one of the favorite pizzas that we like to make at home. Um, and this pizza basically has enchilada sauce on top of your plant strong pizza crust. And then on the left side, we used Upton's Naturals um, Chorizo Seitan, which one of our, our guests in the comments here had mentioned earlier as being a great topping. I completely agree. Net, uh, Upton's Naturals Chorizo Seitan is oil free. So in that regard, it meets the plant strong guidelines. Seitan isn't something that we have an awful lot of the time, but it is something that we have on occasion and it does make a great pizza topping. Here's how you can do it more plant strong on the right side. You just add black beans instead. Mm. And, 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 you know, uh, Amy, um, I had the, the CEO of Upton's on the plant strong podcast a couple of weeks ago. If anybody wants to listen to that, um, hey, John, is that one of your dogs that's barking and wants to get out? <laughs> you're on, you're on, you're on mute. <laughs> oh, I thought I unmuted. No, that, that they're just saying they're ready for pizza. Stop talking about it. Let's uh, uh, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Good. So then again, with this pizza, we're going to talk about good and better. Um, if you have kids in the house or you, your, your significant other does not um, want to have a cheeseless pizza, you can always use vegan cheese on their half of the pizza. What I have substituted on the plant strong side is actually avocado slices. Uh -huh. You're going to add those av avocado slices after you bake the pie, but it makes a really great creamy topping, especially on top of these ingredients. Um. Can I give you guys a little quiz, everybody at home? So 
half a cup of olives is 86 calories, right? Half a cup of olive oil, guess how many, guess how many calories, John or Amy? Uh, if I knew how, if I knew how to do math. 500. <laughs> 965. Wow. So, so this is why we so prefer whole food as opposed to refined processed and especially oils because they are so calorie dense. Look at that. 86 calories for half a cup of olives versus 960 for half a cup of olive oil. That's Powerful. Crazy. Yeah. Well, and plus yeah. you get all the fiber and the, the nutrients inside the actual olives. So that's yeah. Definitely one of the things to consider. Olive oil is nutrient uh, deficient. Bacon. <laughs> bacon, bacon is a, that's the great word. So on top of this pizza, we have cilantro, green onions, black olives, red peppers, and hot sauce. Those ingredients are all the same. So it's really just a swap out of the black beans and the and the uh, the chorizo and vegan cheese and the avocado slices. This is a great way to take a, a, a fiesta pizza that might have ground beef and regular cheese on it, sour cream and whatever else. And you could take that and make it more plant strong. Um, and it the degrees in which you choose to do that are really up to you. What we love to see is if you're putting toppings out to build your own pizza bar, put out a ton of toppings. Put out the, the vegan cheese for those in your household that aren't following the plant strong way. Put out the avocado. Put out all of these things and let everybody choose to build. And often you'll find that maybe people try some toppings that they might not have had you simply not put them out for them to try. Veronica, has anybody else ever heard of taco seasoned oat groats? Wow. Wow. <laughs> I mean, the closest thing that I can think of to that is when we do walnut meat and we do taco seasoning on the walnut meat and we do that in tacos on top of pizza, but wow, oak groats, incredible. Hmm. Oh, wow. That sounds amazing, Rick. Yeah. That sounds amazing. That's a great yeah. combination, not, not just in flavor, but in the colors and textures that you're adding to that pizza. That's one that, that sings, sings to my heart there. I love that. Let's what read I it. love is just how creative people can be, right? I mean, and really, this is the, the pizza crust is a blank canvas. Go for it. Pick a new combination every time you make one. That's right. Pull out your inner Pablo Picasso, each and every one of you. Do it. Do it. <laughs> cilantro. Cilantro. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, let's move on to the next pizza. All right. So... Many of the places here in Portland, where I live, have um, a, a chicken spinach artichoke combination pizza. You can find them just about anywhere here. But this is a pizza that I've done the same thing. I've divided it in half. And on the right side, we're going to use the cannellini beans instead mm. of the Upton's Naturals traditional seitan. Now, I just took that out of the package. It's kind of glommed together when you get it in there. And I just dice it up really sort of fine and sprinkled that on one side, put the cannellini beans down the other. And then this pizza is identical on both sides with the exception, again, of the cheese. I used Parmesan vegan shreds on the left and I use nutritional yeast on the right. This is a great way to, again, elevate that pizza. You're taking the actual chicken and the actual dairy cheese off of this pizza. If you need to do that for somebody in your household, that's an easy swap in. You can also make this on all the different degrees of plant strong, as you see here. In the respect that I know that there are lots of people who might try the the um, this Upton's Naturals on this pizza and actually enjoy it with when it's mixed in with other things. When you have all of those toppings on there, this is going to go over a whole lot better. And it's funny, Rip. Actually, when you mentioned the um, the St. Louis All City Boxing, one of the yeah. things we used to do when we would go to Ringside Nationals in Kansas City. If any of the kids won, we would go out to Waldo Pizza and we would have vegan pizza. So we've got an entire boxing team, eight little kids with us. None of those kids ever turned down a piece of vegan pizza. They right. didn't. But once you add all of those toppings, it's really delicious. And it's not something generally that kids are going to turn their nose up at, especially if they had an opportunity to build it themselves. Mm. That's part of the fun, right? So, yeah. So Lonnie wants to know if there's anything that we can use to substitute for nutritional yeast because she just is having a hard time with the taste. You know, John and Amy, I'll let you guys chime in. But my first thing would be, you know, if you're not so worried about fat content, I would do ground cashews. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. Uh, I find gr ground cashews work, work really nicely to give you a bit of that kind of, um, that cheesy flavor. What about you, Amy and John? That's a great idea. You can actually grind that up with um, some garlic and oregano and basil and grind it up in your food processor to sprinkle it on. And you're really going to get that sort of pizza topping kind of flavor to it. Um, whether you're doing, you could do ground cashews, you could do ground walnuts, either work really well. Yeah. And I would just say, you know, to my daughter, Bryn, Bryn, I'm sorry, but I have to say this. <laughs> you can actually have pizza without cheese on it. It's, <laughs> now, my, when I first went plant-based and I would say, okay, I'm going to have a, a, you know, a pizza. Do you guys want any? And my daughter would turn to me and she goes, dad, it's not pizza if it doesn't have cheese on it. Yeah. And so I don't use any cheese. I don't use nutritional yeast. I just enjoy the flavor of the toppings. I may top it with, like we said earlier, the balsamic vinegar. I may top it with barbecue sauce if it's a barbecue pizza, but you don't need cheese. You don't need nutritional yeast if you don't like it, if you don't want it. It's not yeah. necessary. And then that's funny, John. Yeah, no, the the uh, the pizza police are not going to come raid your home if you don't have cheese on there. Um, but if you remember at Plant Stock this year, we had Chef AJ and she made, I think it was seven recipes. And one of them was a it was a oat something blend that she did as a topper. I can't. Can you remember what it is, Amy or John? Uh, so there's nutritional yeast in that one, but, was, but it's basically, yeah. yeah, it works on the same principle as um, as the ground walnuts or ground cashews. She just skips the nuts and uses the oats instead. Yeah, yeah. Can I recommend topping with OMG walnut sauce? I'm just saying. I mean, you can go on the top and the bottom. <laughs> well, there's that. I wanted to mention, um, Thomas had mentioned about the seitan has 440 milligrams of sodium. Absolutely, it does. So this is this is one of those examples where if you are not watching your sodium or you've got kids in the house, this is a great option on that left side of the pizza. On the right side, we used cannellini beans that had no salt added. So it just gives you sort of the same flavor profile, and almost the same sort of texture with those big uh, juicy cannellini beans on that right side of the pizza. But if you're watching your sodium, that's definitely one of the considerations to take into account here. And it's really easy to sort of just swap that ingredient out and use the right side instead. You know, Rick, Rick, great idea there. You know, I, I've had um, Kiki on the on the podcast. She also was at Plant Stock and she does. She raves about her cheese sauce and uh, something to definitely check out. You know, Amy, I want to say that in our house, there's five of us. So when it's pizza crust night or pizza kit night, we lay out the five pizza crusts, everybody gets their sauce packets, and then we lay out on the kitchen counter all the different toppings. And then we each make our own, and the kid's pizza looks a lot like the previous one that you did, because we they they have the vegan cheese, they have the, the seitan, they have the Uptons, you know, all that stuff. But the good thing is we cut it in half, and then we typically have three slices for dinner, and then we take the leftovers, put them in Tupperware containers for lunch the next day. They take them to school. I take them to the office. Uh, and so anyway, it's such a great way to have a dinner and then have lunch the next day. We do the same thing. It's it's really, um, they reheat really well, whether you're reheating them in the oven or reheating them in the microwave or even a toaster oven. Yeah. Um, I, I love, and I like pizza cold. I'm one of those people. <laughs> But um, it's it's a great, great way to do that. I love and not just that, but what happens when you are finished building all of the pizzas and you still have some toppings left over in all of the bowls? Those make great toppers for the bowls that you might build with your batch cooking. Nice. Yes. Multitasking. <laughs> all right. Let's move on to the next pizza. I'm really excited to give you this uh, this example that I discovered. So I went to Whole Foods Market when I was shopping for the toppings for this pizza exercise, and I found two new products. Now, these are products that would fall in the vegan not oil. There's no oil in any of these, but the sodium is going to be a little bit higher. But these otherwise would be 100% plant strong products because there's no oil, there's no animals. And this is just an amazing new thing. So the first thing I want to talk about is the Credo Roasted Garlic Alfredo Sauce. Credo is a company based in Austin, Texas. They're friends of ours down there in Austin. They have some great products. Some of them are oil free. Not all of them are, but the Credo Roasted Garlic Alfredo Sauce um, is one of their brand new products. It's so new, it's not on their website yet. And this is an oil-free cheese sauce that is absolutely 
delicious. Mm. There's two different varieties that we had at our Whole Foods Market. This one is the roasted garlic Alfredo sauce. It was absolutely amazing. And I topped our pizza with this. Now, after I walked past the Credo sauce and put that in my cart, I discovered another new product called Eat Me. It's M-E-A-T-I. And they have this product called Classic Steaks. Now, believe it or not, these steak strips that are on this pizza are made from mushrooms. And it is one of those things when if you were, let's just put it this way. I was not a big mushroom fan until I became plant strong. Mm. There mm. are so many different varieties of mushrooms out there. There are so many different things you can do with mushrooms. Derek Sarno at Wicked Healthy is one of my heroes because he does so many amazing things with mushrooms. I'm going to tell you, this Eat Meaty Classic Steak Strips was absolutely incredible. I threw these on my grill pan. I sliced them up into steak strips after I did that. And I had some in a bowl sitting next to the pizza as I was building everything. And after I put the pizza in the oven, my husband came home and he took one that had zero seasoning on it, just a steak strip straight out of the grill pan, tasted it. And he's like, what is this? This tastes like steak. And I said, it does taste like steak. It's actually mycelium root, which is part of how mushrooms grow. And these are oil free and they are absolutely incredible. They taste like tender steak. I slice these up, put them on the left side of the pizza. And I wanted to show you how you can do both things on one pizza. Because these are oil free, they could actually go on both sides of the pizza. But for this example, I wanted to show you both ways. So instead of steak strips on the left, on the right side, I did some pinto beans. These also have the baked potato slices on top of them, red onions, red bell pepper, some oregano. And then on the right side, I chopped up very finely some fresh, fresh Swiss chard that I sprinkled over the top of the right side of this pizza. This pizza is very, uh, has all that umami flavor. It's mm. creamy, it's delicious. It's very satisfying again with those potatoes on there. This was an absolute hit at our house. It didn't make it to leftovers. It was gone. No. Wow. It was gone. This was, you a know, great you know, what's interesting about you finding those eat meaty classic steaks is that my daughter, I picked her up from school yesterday and there's a a grocery store uh, right near her school called the uh, Wheatsville Co-op. And she got these mushroom jerkies. And it's the only ingredient was like portobello or lion's mane. And they are so meaty and that umame and that texture. So, I mean, this is really, this is good for, for pizza uh, people that love steak. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. You could, you could, and obviously other examples, you could dice it up the same way, throw it in tacos or a burrito or in a bowl, any, any way you want to slice it. Um, but this was a great pizza topping, especially for your meat and potatoes fans. I, I, you may not um, obviously convert everybody on a mushroom steak. We understand that. But this definitely gives that flavor profile. It definitely gives the texture. It actually, the texture's the most incredible part here. Whoa. And so this is just another example of how you can bring everybody to the table with all of those flavors. Yeah. And the look and the look. And what I love here is, I mean, you're calling this whole exercise, Amy and John, you know, um, having a pizza party with a house divided. But to me, we're, we're, what I love is you're bringing them on board with a let's just call it a uh, plant-based pizza. It's not like a plant strong or plant perfect, but it's plant-based. And so they get to see how using all these creative ingredients that you're using, Amy, they can have a healthier plant-based pizza that really mimics um, the traditional pizzas they, they've known to love. Well, that's just it. We're, what we're looking for here is how we can elevate the standard American diet pizza. Right. And obviously there are degrees to that. So you can take it from, you know, standard America, completely loaded, cheese stuffed, everything. Or you can go all the way to the other side, to the plant strong side and yeah. have that pizza. But there are so many degrees in the middle. And if you can get your family to just sort of maybe give up one of the toppings that they would normally have in the standard America diet, you are winning this game. So mm -hmm. start there. Provide those toppings so that they can choose to, of what to put on their pizza. You might be surprised what they try. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Not even give up, right? Maybe they add some of the greens. Maybe they add some of the veggies that they normally wouldn't put on there just because they're, they're cut up. They're sitting right there. Why not just throw it on and see what it tastes like? So Absolutely. I think it's, I think the, this is a great way to kind of introduce people that plant-based eating can be delicious. 
I agree completely. So let's take a look at the ingredient swap slide that we have that is going to give you some ideas for this instead of that. Now, obviously, when you're putting out the toppings, like I said, if your family has to have pepperoni, obviously put that on the table for them. But you can also add these other swaps as well. So instead of a white flour pizza crust, obviously the plant strong pizza crust is a great option, oil free and it's whole grain. You could add either seitan or cannellini beans in place of chicken. You could add nutritional yeast or vegan cheese or avocado slices in place mm. of regular cheese. Um, also tofu ricotta. So if you look on our Plant Strong Foods website for our stuffed shells recipe, you will find there's a recipe for making Renata ricotta cheese, which is basically just tofu, some cannellini beans, some nutritional yeast, garlic and basil. You can whip that up and make sort of a white pizza with that in the same way that you would the OMG walnut sauce. That's a great mm. option as well. Um, lentils in place of ground beef, you can make, or the walnut taco meat, but instead of adding taco seasoning, you would just add garlic and basil and oregano to make that, the, uh, the walnut taco meat or the lentils taste more like a, a, an Italian ground beef. Um, you can do the same thing with smoky baked tofu. You're going to use some smoked paprika or liquid smoke uh, on a baked tofu that you can make that has that essence of ham. Obviously, it's not going to be actual ham, but just that smoky flavor can really do a lot if you are a fan of the sort of ham or Canadian bacon pineapple pizzas. And then uh, tempe bacon that we talked about earlier in place of bacon. Butler soy curls when seasoned with a little bit of balsamic vinegar and a little bit of basil and oregano and garlic can make a great topping that resembles sausage. It sort of has the same flavor profile mm -hmm. and any sort of plant burger mix that you like your favorite plant burger when you're making um, when you're making a patty for making a recipe for your burgers also make some balls bake those up you can slice those in half and have meatballs on top of your pizza that are entirely plant based. Mm. And Amy. Is, is there a way that everybody that is tuning in either today or on the replay on our Go Plan Strong YouTube channel can have access to these? Yep. So there is a blog post that is on our website, Carrie. It should be saved underneath uh, the Wednesday warm up stuff. The link should be in there. It's a tiny URL that I posted on there if you want to find that to pop at the bottom. Um, so at Plant Strong Foods, we have all of these images and the, the pizza examples that I showed you in the beginning are all on our website at plantstrongfoods.com. So you can refer to this anytime that you need to when you are considering having your own Plant Strong Pizza Party. And if you really like this sort of idea on how to build bars and how to do these different things, um, you might actually find um, that having a bar, when we have our, what do you call it, um, our retreats, we do a potato bar. We, yeah. we do all kinds of different bars with different kinds of toppings. We're actually going to be dis discussing that on Tuesday in the Plant Strong Coaching Program. We're going to give you a variety of different types of bar building activities that you can do with your family. Coach Karen Drexler is going to be presenting that. She has a big family that eats Plant Strong, and they have tons and tons and tons of fun with these different kind of build a bars, whether it's a burger bar or a ramen bar. She has all kinds of ideas. We're going to be presenting that on Tuesday. If you have lots of people in your household, it can be a really great way to bring everybody to the table, providing all those different toppings, whether it is on top of pasta or otherwise pizza. Um, you can do that to have everybody sort of enjoying the same meal together, but with their own individual needs being met. So John and Amy, for people that um, haven't experienced your coaching before and they, they're mm -hmm. looking for that community, that support, the accountability, um, learning everything that you guys have learned over the last, you know, decade plus that you guys have been eating this way. Uh, how, what, what's the best way for them to start? Where, where can they, where can they, how can they join? So they would just go to myplantstrong.com and uh, they can sign up there and, and Rip, you know this, but just so everybody knows, you know, we obviously talk about food, food, and more food on the, the coaching program, but we also focus a lot on habits and mindset and how you not only enjoy this lifestyle, but how you make it stick. Because we found that, you know, so many people, whether it's a regular diet or Weight Watchers or whatever, they start and then they just stop because they don't have the support. They don't have the community and they're kind of out there and they feel like they're all alone. That's mm -hmm. what this program is all about is bringing everyone together, making it a community and really making you love what you're eating and just enjoying all the benefits that come with plant-based eating. And Amy, what's the, the, there's a discount too. 
Yeah, so you can use code MINDSET, M-I-N-D-S-E-T, to get a month free of the Plant Strong Coaching Program if you'd like to sign up and give that a shot. Join John and I each week as we go through all kinds of tips and ideas and teaching you tools that you can use that really do make a difference. Anybody can give you a list of food to eat and a list of food to avoid, but it's really how we approach our food and how we approach our habits and our mindset that really get us through. When you want to be plant strong for the long haul and make this a lifestyle instead of a temporary fix, we have all kinds of tools and ideas to help you do that. Mm, you guys, thank you um, for that. Um, Anybody that has never ordered before, like if you're if you're like going, you know what, I need to spring and get one of these pizza crust kits. Let me tell you, for first time customers right now, use the code Plant Strong fifteen and get fifteen percent off. All right, Plant Strong. I'm sorry, not strong. Plant Strong, just Strong fifteen. Strong fifteen and get fifteen percent off. Um, yeah. So, Amy. Are there any more slides or is that it? I think that's the last one. Got it. <laughs> I think that's the last one. I, I, I will continue building more and exciting pizza ideas for you guys. But this was a super fun um, example of how you can really um, just do a little bit better if you're not going all the way in, especially with those family members that might be resistant to eating this way. Yeah. Obviously not everybody wants to have pizza without cheese on it. Bryn, I appreciate you. <laughs> um, there, there are all kinds of ways to do this as you, you can see here. We just wanted to really expand your mind when it comes to your topping game and really have fun with this exercise. And I wanna appreciate everybody that joins us on Friday and is, um, is supporting us um like rick here you know saying this has been awesome love all, the, all love all you guys do as i do follow the products are amazing as well good job guys thank you we appreciate it you know we we are doing our best to try and make this lifestyle as convenient and easy and as, as accessible as possible through everything we do whether it's our coaching programs with john and amy whether it's the food line whether it's our live events our Facebook Friday lives, uh, our retreats, our uh, virtual events. So the podcast, all of it. So thank you to all of you. Um, guess where I got to go? I literally have got to go. I've got a 20 minute drive to see my daughter in a swim meet. And if I don't leave in a minute, I'm going to be late. Wait, and, wait, uh, can I add one thing? Please. If you guys are members of the the, the the Plant Strong Facebook group, share in the group the pizzas that you're making. We would love to see all the great ideas that are out there because we can all learn from that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, John, Amy, everybody that's tuning in, you guys make it a Plant Strong weekend. Get out there, do something that's outside your comfort zone. Stretch. Stretch. Meditate. Meditate. And eat pizza. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Have a great weekend. Boom, 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 boom.